Hi, welcome to Unit 2.2. We're talking about the formal definition of the derivative. Remember, you can always pause these videos as you take your notes or have misunderstandings or whatever's going on. You can't always pause. Last time when we talked about our derivatives, we talked about slope. We figured out average rate of change and the difference between a secant line and a tangent line. And that big difference is that with that tangent line, we're looking at instantaneous rate of change. But how do I actually calculate that instantaneous rate of change? Before, we were estimating using the secant information, f of b minus f of a all over b minus a. But today, we're going to move forward past that with some information about our slope from the secant lines, we transform that into a limit approaching our for our tangent slope. And using this, you can actually calculate instantaneous rate of change. So this is the page you really have to memorize. The previous ones were just kind of examples, visual aids, but this is the most important page. This first one is the uh, formal definition. This is what happens when you are actually applying a value. And of course, we still have that slope estimation using that um, quotient difference formula. So here's our first example that I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that example for us. Or not that example, sorry, the equation. So I've got my f prime. And what does prime mean? Prime simply means my derivative. So my derivative is actually equal to my limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And what does this actually mean? Well, anytime you've got a function value and you've got something here, what do you do with it? You plug it in every time you see a variable. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing. So if I'm searching for my, my derivative right here, the first thing I'm going to do is declare what I'm searching for. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my formula. My limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. Well, I look at my f of x. Every time I see a variable, I'm going to put in x plus h. But I'm going to bring everything else over. Then I'm going to subtract my original function. I put it in parentheses because that's a good habit to get into. Right now we only have a single term, but later you're going to have multiple terms and you don't want to forget to dis distribute the negative. So I'm going to go ahead and FOIL this out. We're going to use this a few times today, so I'm going to put this on the side so you can kind of recall and remember what that looks like. And so we're going to do our first terms. We've got that middle term, another middle term and our final, and this is going to combine and become 2xh. So I rewrite it, and basically what I'm trying to do here is remove my parentheses. So this becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over our h. The next thing I want to do is I want to delete, I want to cancel out anything that can. Positive x squared and negative x squared will absolutely cancel out. So I'm going to bring down my simplified form, my limit as h approaches 0 up to what's that? 2xh plus h squared all over h. Well, guess what? Now I've got something else I can simplify. I've got a factor right there. I can factor out an h. So my limit as h approaches 0, I can put that h out front, 2x plus h squared all over your h. And guess what? Now I see something else I can cancel out. I can pull away from it. So where do I have space on my page? I don't know. I'll try it down here. My limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus, oh, that shouldn't have been a squared. My sincerest apologies, plus h. And what does this look like now? There's no more denominator, so I can't have a 0 on bottom anymore. So I get to do my limit procedures and use direct substitution. So that's going to become 2x plus 0, which is just going to become 2x. So if we wanted to finish our, our answer, we would say that f prime of x is equal to 2x. And if I want to plug that in, f prime of 2 would be equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. And that's your answer. 
But I've got a few more examples here. I've got three totals, so I've got one more example right after this. My examples, um, if you are still struggling, please come see me. But of course, you can always pause these videos, rewind these videos, anything that you need to understand this concept. So our second one here is negative 5x plus 4. And again, we're searching for the derivative. I'm going to go ahead and begin at this point. I'm hoping that you uh, kind of have memorized that formula or written it down somewhere. So f prime of x is going to be equal to my limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So negative 5 is not a variable, but x is. So I'm going to replace it with x plus h. Plus 4 is not a variable, so I just bring that on down. Minus my original function. And again, now you can see why those parentheses are so darn important all over my h. Now I do what I can to remove those parentheses. I do my limit as h approaches 0 of negative 5x minus 5h plus 4, a negative minus, or minus 2 negatives, let's make it a positive, 5x minus 4, all over h. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel away all the stuff that is allowed to cancel. Those will cancel, that will cancel, and I simplify on down. So it becomes the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 5h over h. And now that we're seeing it like this, we can see there's even one more thing I can go ahead and cross out. So that actually means my limit as h approaches 0 is simply the constant negative 5. So if we wanted to wrap up, we could say f prime of x is equal to negative 5. And when we plug in f prime of 3, well, there's no variable to plug in. It's a constant line at negative 5. So all answers must be negative 5. I've got one final example for you guys. I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as possible before my time limit gets off. So I've got f prime of x is equal to my limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h. So 3x plus h squared plus 7 minus my original function all over our h. Then we're going to simplify out, get rid of anything we can. And again, I'm going to distribute that 3. And what I want to do now, again, is cancel out anything I'm allowed to cancel. So let's go ahead and cancel out the 3x, negative 3x, positive 7, negative 7. And that's what we got back down to. So I need a new page. This is now going to be my limit as h approaches 0 of 6xh plus 3h squared all over h. So now I see an h that I can factor out. My limit as h approaches 0 of h times 6x plus 3h all over h. My h's are going to cancel out. And I'm going to be left with my limit as h approaches 0 of 6x plus 3h. And now that I have no denominator, I can go ahead and plug in that 0. That becomes 6x plus 3 times 0, that's going to cross out, which simply leaves me with 6x. So we can wrap up and say f prime of x equals 6x. So therefore, f prime of 4 should equal 6 times 4. So it should equal 24. And there's our end answer. That's all the formal definition of the derivative really is. From here, we'll move on to derivative shortcuts. I'll see you in class.